Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. I had a request from my Calc 2 class to solve this problem. So I aim to please. Here we go. Find the volume of the torus generated by revolving the circle x minus 7 squared plus y squared equals 1 about the y-axis. So they told us, hey, in case you forgot, this is the equation of a circle. I'll give you a little refresher. Circle centered at HK has standard form equation as follows. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. So the center of the circle is at H comma K and the radius is R. So looking here, if we have X minus 7 squared plus Y squared equals 1, the center is where? Good, 7 comma 0 and the radius is 1, square root of 1. We're spinning this circle around the y-axis, and what it's making is a torus. All right, think of like a donut with a giant hole in the middle. And so let's draw this. If I'm spinning around the y-axis, and this circle is centered at 7, 0, I'm just going to draw nice, really far out in the positive and negative x direction, okay? And I'm not going to stress too much. This is not perfectly to scale. I'm going to say here's 7, okay? Yes, that's 7. And then here's my circle. Copy it because we're spinning. We're spinning around the y-axis. So maybe around here. Okay. Radius is 1. So this is going to be 8. This is 6. Note not to scale just go by how i'm labeling okay this is the original region i'm shading this and then we're spinning around the y-axis okay so that's why we have this the region reflected over here and it's making a solid it's making a torus if you want to add a little bit of dimension or whatnot okay do 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 I don't want it to get too messy. So we're going to find the volume. Now we have to think to the previous unit when we had discs or washers or cylindrical shells, which method to utilize. So I like to look at the function and say, mm, how would I prefer to integrate and then make my decision from there. And then if that doesn't work out, then we can change plans. So this is obviously needing to be rearranged before we start figuring out um, which method to use. Would you rather solve for y or solve for x? I think it's a little bit cleaner if we solve for y and have the equation of the circle in terms of x. So let's think, if we're going to want to end up integrating with respect to x and we're spinning around the y-axis, integrating with respect to x would mean that we would be peeling parallel to the axis of revolution. So if we're going to integrate with respect to x, we're going to use the method of cylindrical shells. So we want to integrate with respect to x. So I'm going to use the shell method. And then if you'd rather integrate with respect to y, then you could see if disks or washers is going to work. I didn't bother for this problem. It comes out pretty nicely. Okay. So let's draw a typical shell. That's imperative. Remember, if you're spinning around the y-axis, which is a vertical line, then you draw a little baby vertical line segment in the original region. You reflect it on the other side. That is the height of your cylindrical shell. And then just connect those two pieces. Boom, here's a shell. I love it so much. And then here's the radius. Okay, can we correctly identify the radius and the height? Well, radius is always just plain old x if you're integrating with respect to x, unless you spin around something other than the y-axis. Then you would have like x minus 3 or 5 minus x or something like that, but that's not happening here. Now, the height, we have to do top minus bottom. Well, what's bounding the height on the top? The upper half of the circle. What's bounding the height on the bottom? The bottom half of the circle. So now I need to come back here and solve for y in terms of x. So y squared equals 1 minus x minus 7 squared. So y would equal plus or minus square root 
1 minus x minus 7 squared. And then keep in mind the positive radical, that describes the upper half of the circle, the negative bottom half, okay? So the height would be top minus bottom, so positive rad 1 minus x minus 7 squared, minus what's on the bottom, negative rad 1 minus x minus 7 squared. Good? Well, notice minus minus makes it a plus, so I have two of these radicals. So the height is basically two radical, one minus x minus seven squared. Okay, so now let's put it all together. Do you remember the formula for volume using cylindrical shells? You have two pi rh. Limits are based off of the original region before we spun. So in terms of x, it's from six to eight. Six to eight. Radius is x, and then the height is 2 radical 1 minus x minus 7 squared dx. And then I'm noticing here, I have a 2. Let me take it outside with the 2 pi. So we have 4 pi, 6 to 8, x rad, 1 minus x minus 7 squared dx. All right, now what to do from here? I wouldn't say jump right into trying to uh, do, you could use sub first, that's what we're gonna do, just to make things a little more manageable. I'm gonna actually let you be x minus seven, because we're, we're gonna run into some problems if we leave it like this. You could, but it's just more, more difficult on the brain. So let's let u equal x minus seven, then du is just dx, right? And then we also have to change the limits so 8, u of 8 is 8 minus 7, which is 1. And then u of 6, 6 minus 7, which is negative 1. So now our integral is going to be 4 pi, negative 1 to 1. Now what do we do with this weird little x that's left over? Go back here. u equals x minus 7. That means x equals u plus 7. So that's what I'm going to replace it with, u plus 7. And then I have square root, 1 minus, instead of x minus 7 squared, I'm going to have u squared, and dx is just du. And the reason this makes things a little bit nicer is now I can distribute u and 7, not inside the radical, but like across to the radical. So watch. We have 4 pi integral, negative 1 to 1. I'm going to write two of them u times rad 1 minus u squared du plus 7 times the integral negative 1 to 1 radical 1 minus u squared du. Do you see what just happened? Okay, good. Now we're going to tackle these one at a time. Here's the first part. And let's work just on that little baby integral. Negative 1 to 1 u radical 1 minus u squared du. So now things are looking a lot cleaner. If you look underneath the radical, I have degree 2 expression, and outside I have u to the first. So this is a perfect time to do another u sub, but since I already used up u, we got to pick a different variable. So let's just let t equal 1 minus u squared. Oops. So dt is negative 2u du which I see u du right here. So negative 1 half dt is u du. Good. Shall we change our limits? Oh yes, we should. So 1, that's a limit for u. t equals 1 minus 1 squared, that's 0. And then over here, negative 1, t would be 1 minus negative 1 squared, which is also 0. <gasps> so we actually have nothing to do. Why do I say that? Because both the upper and lower limits are zero, which means the value of the integral is going to be zero. There's no area under the curve when the upper and lower limits are the same. But I'll just keep going just since we did all this prep work. So negative one half uh, t to the one half dt, but don't even waste any more time. That thing's all equal to zero. Once you see this, it's zero. Okay, cool. So this is all zero. Do, do, do. Fabulous. What about integral number two? Okay, 
So we have seven. Let me just copy it. Come with me down here. Okay. Options. Option one, you trig sub. What would you do for your trig sub? Mm, you would let u equal sine theta. Okay. And it wouldn't be bad. It wouldn't. I'm going to show you something else though. You actually used to be asked to do this integral back in Calc 1 before you even knew trig sub. And you might be saying, I don't think so. Yeah, you did. If you look at this, this represents, again, the integrand is the equation of a semicircle. It's y equals rad 1 minus u squared, which means y squared equals 1 minus u squared. So u squared plus y squared equals 1. This is a circle. But since we only have the positive radical in the integral, this is the upper half of a circle. In the uy plane, you can think of it as xy. It's just we're working with u's, so I will label it accordingly. Here's u, here's y. And the radius is 1, and the center is at 0, 0. And we're only dealing with the upper half. And notice the limits of integration happen to be from negative 1 to 1. So here's another way you can actually do this problem. You can say, wait a minute. I know this integral represents the area under the curve, in this case under the semicircle, from negative 1 to 1. From negative 1 to 1. Well, I have a formula from geometry that allows me to compute the area of that semicircle. It would be 1 half pi r squared, which would be 1 half pi times 1 squared, or pi over 2. Yes? And so I don't even have to do any integration. I can just say this is 7 times pi over 2, or 7 pi over 2. You would get the same result if you did the trick sub. Also, you couldn't do this trick if this limit was something like negative 0.5. We don't have a formula for just that chunk of a circle. If it was 0 to 1, we could do it because that's a quarter of a circle. But do you see these limits have to be just so to be able to use this little shortcut? Okay, so don't rely on it, but when it happens, it's nice. It's, you know, fabulous time saver. No one's angry. So that second integral is equal to 7 pi over 2. Let me do the same little. This guy is 7 pi over 2. And then don't forget, all along we had sweet little 4 pi hanging outside. So 4 pi times 7 pi over 2 is our final answer. So we have, I'm sorry, it got chaotic. 4 pi times 7 pi over 2, and then this will cancel. This is a 2, and then I'm left with 14 pi squared. And this is units cubed, because this is a volume, right? Volume of the torus. And one of my students happened to know the formula for the volume of a torus, which you can use to check your answer, but when you're in calculus and you're asked to derive something, you got to go from scratch. Okay, so that concludes the video. What was this, number 47 on your practice test, my little angels? So I'll see you all this afternoon in class. <laughs> Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed it in YouTube land. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll be back soon. Bye.